very good morning to every one of you and welcome to the celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. In the gospel text of today, we will continue to read about how Jesus wants to reveal himself. But we will also read about how those who hear him will close themselves. It is surprising that they close themselves because Jesus was telling them explicitly who he was. But the reason why they closed themselves was because their minds had been made up in advance. And this is something which happens to all of us and we need to watch for it because God reveals himself in mysterious ways. God does not always reveal himself in extraordinary ways but sometimes and maybe even more often than not in the regular, the ordinary and the mundane things which happen in our lives. What we need to do is open our minds and hearts to encounter this revealing God. For those times, Lord, we wanted to experience you only in the extraordinary. Lord, have mercy. For those times, Lord, we could not find you in the ordinary, the mundane, the routine. Christ, have mercy. And so for those times, Lord, we lost opportunities to truly encounter you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin. May he bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. As we come before you this morning, Father, we ask you to open our minds and our hearts to the realization that you will reveal yourself to us not only in the miraculous, not only in the extraordinary, but in the ordinary things which happen in our day. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Book of Wisdom the godless say to themselves, with their misguided reasoning, Let us lie and wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law, and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. He claims to have knowledge of God, and calls himself a son of the Lord. Before us he stands, a reproof to our way of thinking. The very sight of him weighs our spirits down. His way of life is not like others, other men's. The paths he treads are unfamiliar. In his opinion, we are counterfeit. He holds aloof from our doings as though from filth. He proclaims the final end of the virtuous as happy and boasts of having God or his father. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture and thus explore this gentleness of his and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death since he will be looked after. We have his word for him. This is the way they reason, but they are misled. Their malice makes them blind. They do not know the hidden things of God. They have no hope that holiness will be rewarded. They can see no reward for blameless souls. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, the Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. The just call and the Lord hears and rescues him in all their distress. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Those whose spirit is crushed he will save. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. He will keep guard over all his bones. Not one of his bones shall be broken. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. Those who hide in him shall not be condemned. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. After this, Jesus stayed in Galilee. He could not stay in Judea because some were wanting to kill him. As the Jewish festival of the tabernacles drew near, after his family had gone to the festival, Jesus went up to the festival himself privately without drawing attention to himself. Meanwhile, some of the people in Jerusalem were saying, Isn't this the man that people want to kill? And here he is, speaking openly, and they have nothing to say to him. Can it be true that the authorities have made up their mind that he is indeed the Messiah, the Christ? Yet we all know that when the Messiah comes, he will come from a place which we do not know. So therefore, they refused to believe in him. Then, as Jesus taught in the temple, he cried out, Yes, you know me, and you know where I come from, yet I have not come of myself. No, there is someone who has sent me, and I really come from him, and you do not know him, but I know him, because I have come from him, and it was he who sent me. They would have arrested him then, but because his time had not yet come, no one laid a hand on him. The Gospel of the Lord There are two responses of this group of people who encounter Jesus. On the one hand, their heart wants to believe. Because they can see with the eyes of the heart that Jesus is indeed living out what the true Messiah would be. But their minds have been made up because their minds are giving them a different image of the Messiah. Their minds go back to the scriptures, their minds go back to what they know as fact, and their minds refuse to believe. And so there is a confusion. And yet, when Jesus reveals himself and emphatically states that he has indeed come from God, they refuse to believe because they let their minds overtake their hearts, they let their thoughts overrule their feelings. While sometimes we might want to let our thoughts overrule our feeling, at other times we must know and be able to discern when our feelings are more important than our thoughts. In the case of the people at the time of Jesus, this was a time when the feelings of the people ought to have overruled their thoughts, but they lost out and they lost out on encountering the Messiah. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. Let it become for us the bread of life.
by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Let it become for us a cup of joy. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, merciful Father, along with these gifts of bread and wine, the numerous occasions on which we were self-righteous and proud. We ask you, Lord, as you transform this bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus to transform our pride into humility. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just that we must praise and thank you at every single moment of our lives. In a very special way this morning, Father, we thank you for opening the eyes of our hearts to the realization that it is our pride which leads to our downfall. If we are self-righteous, we cannot encounter you and so we need to be humbled before you. You showed this to us in the gospel text that we heard, but you showed us what true humility means when you sent Jesus to be our saviour. For such a great gift as Jesus, we praise you along with the saints and the angels as we say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, <clears throat> and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to send forth your Spirit upon these gifts to make them the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Making present his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Mary, ever virgin mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Ignatius, St. Francis Xavier, we may be graced to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace today. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all kind of useless worry as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you are saying to us this morning, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the little faith we have. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. See, my brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that even though we have looked for you in the extraordinary, you have given us Jesus in this ordinary bread which has indeed come from heaven. We pray that with Jesus in us, we might learn to find you at every moment of our lives because you are there. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord is with you. May Almighty God bless each of you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go to find God in the ordinary and regular.